What happens when you take a costume party, mix it with E3, and move it to the other side of the world? The Tokyo Game Show. It's a dream come true for Japanese gamers who actually got to play a handful of next-gen titles and got a sneak peek at games that are still far from release. There are also plenty of other things to peek at. You might say cosplay is a little popular with the fans who have fans of their own. But hopefully everybody knows that's not the main attraction. It's the booth base. And, uh, of, of, of course, the games. We had the chance to meet with a few developers who have Xbox 360 games in the works. The biggest challenge for me with this game is teaching people to, like, breaking the convention of what they're doing. And the best analogy I can compare it to is, like, with a stealth game. Before, like, stealth games came along, it was still that kind of run and gun, right? Just kind of, like, run at your enemy and kind of, you know, it didn't matter if you stepped, in, you know, into the light, right? And then games like Thief, Metal Gear, Splinter Cell came along and they taught you it, you know, it's a lot easier if you just avoid your enemies instead of, you know, getting shot. And with Gears, it's going to be the same thing. You guys haven't seen some of these that we're going to show you now, so it's all fairly exclusive stuff. That's is really cool because he's kind of inspired by Elastic Bands and Elasticity, hence his name. And, um, and so he goes and represents that. I'll just take you through a bit of his brand as well. There's over 50, 60 different sub-quests to do in, in the adventure sections, um, together with lots of other hidden stuff as well um, that are kind of dotted around in the game world. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff there for people to... Those that want to do every single part of the game, they can do. Um, we're looking at the moment as approximately 30 hours for the average gamer. All the cars do 170 miles an hour, and they're all incredibly fast, they're all incredibly desirable um, as individual cars in their own right. Um, there's 80 cars in the game, um, so we cut down a little from what we had in Gotham 2, but it's allowed us to do so much more detail on each of the cars. Um, each car contains 80,000 polygons, um, 40,000 on the interiors, so that was something we, we also wanted to do car interiors this time around. We also got the chance to speak with some Japanese developers about their 360 games. I think the good game always, you know, uh, very good rhythm and uh, very good chemistry is physical something and emotional something. So, uh, level design, so, uh, mm. it's always the same, always the same. Uh, you can play the seven characters you can choose. Five characters as human beings, and two characters as a races. Now we want to make this game a solid wrestling and fighting game as well, so we try to implement you know, those moves that you see in you know, wrestling and uh, fighting. But at the same time, yes, you know, there are girls, and uh, we always keep in mind to throw in some you know, moves that would be more humiliated if you know, a girl had to do it to another girl. The thing is, it's funny, uh, it's the female staff that come up with some of the crazy or wilder ideas. And like we start blushing because of some of their, you know, obscene ideas. It's well known that Microsoft is desperately courting the Japanese market. And their presence was definitely felt on the show floor. With all the great games coming out for Xbox 360, it's going to be a great year. Unless, of course, you're waiting until next year to show off your homemade costume. Come on, Nadia! <laughs> Tomo arigato, Tokyo! See you next year! And did we mention the cosplay girls?